Welcome to the Lounge Lizards podcast. It's so good to have you here. It's a leisure and lifestyle podcast founded on our love of premium cigars, as well as whiskey, travel, food, work, and whatever else we feel like getting into. My name is Gizmo. Tonight, I'm joined by Rooster, Puba, Senator, and Bam Bam. And our plan is to smoke a cigar, drink some non-alcoholic beer, talk about life, and of course, have some laughs. So take this as your 69th official invitation to join us and become a card-carrying lounge lizard. We plan to meet us here once a week. We're going to smoke a New World cigar tonight, share our thoughts on it, and give you our formal lizard rating. We go through Cigar Journal's top 25 cigars of last year. We discuss the importance of reciprocity when gifting cigars, and the guys revel in my Super Bowl pain, all among a variety of other things for the next 90 minutes. So sit back, get your favorite drink, light up a cigar, and enjoy as we pair Athletic Brewing's Run Wild IPA with the Warped Maestro Del Tiempo 5205. A Lonsdale tonight on the podcast from Warped. It's called the Maestro Del Tiempo. The size is a 5205, they call it. Beautiful 42 ring gauge by six and three eighths inches cigar. I think as all of us pulled this out of the mm. cellophane, I mean, it's really impressive in the hand. It's, a, it's really a nice cigar. You know, we talk about this a lot. I mean, we're kind of in the middle of a Lancero Lonsdale kind of block in the podcast right now, somewhat accidentally, but. Um, this is just really a wonderful size. Yeah. It, beautifully, it looks like it's beautifully made. Yeah. Con- wrapper's really nice. Yeah. Nice floral aroma. Yeah. Tight seams. Mm-hmm. And um, I love the band on it. It reminds me of like a like an H. Upman type of band. Very subtle. Very simple. Very cool. All right, boys. Let's cut this thing. Should we get another cold draw on the wrapper? It's nice to see a New World Lonsdale, which there are not a ton of. So hopefully it performs well so we can give it oh, high man. marks. I'm, I'm getting dried fruit on that mm. cold draw. Cold draw is excellent. Delicious. Giving leather, nutmeg, and cocoa. Very good. That was the fastest call out of flavors yeah. I've ever experienced. <laughs> I'm impressed. That's a complex list of call outs like within 3.2 seconds. That's all, he, that's all he was getting. Just... That's, that's what it is. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. Yeah. It's mm. good. It's good. Mm. So leather... Cocoa and nutmeg. Nutmeg. Well, I get dry. I'm getting a little bit uh, like a like a like a doughy thing, like a raisiny type. Yes, thing for raisiny me. or tastes like a leather belt. <laughs> <laughs> I've never chewed on one of those. <laughs> All right, boys, let's light this thing. The warped ass bam. <laughs> <laughs> it is episode sixty nine, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> God help us all. Uh, the warped. Maestro Del Tiempo, <laughs> aptly named. Again, it's the 5205, which is a Lonsdale 42 ring gauge by six and three eighths inches. Really, really nice cigar. Uh, very reasonable price. I think they were around 10 bucks. And this was a listener recommend, correct? It was a listener recommend, yes, which is excellent. We, always, have, we love listener recommendations. On always this a cool thing. Wow. On the light, boys. Yeah, this is good on the light. I'm impressed. Wow. Dude, <laughs> this is legit so far. I, if it goes halfway this good, I'll be thrilled. This is shocking. For That's really good. So mm. I put a box of this in the cart this morning, thinking if the pod goes well, I'm just going to hit buy. <laughs> We're master. so desperate for. <laughs> I, I, I'm doing that as we speak. <laughs> I'm so desperate for. We're so desperate for for New World Lonsdales that are reasonably priced. Just, I mean, I'm just looking for the price point. Yeah. Anything under like, at, you know, around ten bucks, between eight and ten bucks. Yep. Yeah. And, and your daily rotation. So, what I mean, price did you see when you put the box in your cart? Do you remember? I think the box was two twenty one for a box yeah. of twenty five. Yeah. So they're a little under ten bucks in bulk. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure at a, a B&M somewhere you're paying 12 to 14 but this is uh, ridiculous. It really if you took the band off and and not from a flavor standpoint but just how it looks and feels in the hand it's identical to that 898 that we love from Partagas. Yeah. It literally looks and and feels exactly like that. Obviously very different in flavor. This oh. is a Nicaraguan puro. Get the, um get the aroma on yeah, the smoke. Amazing. Wow. So this is a Nicaraguan shade grown Jalapa Corojo 99 wrapper. Uh, the filler is Nicaraguan Corojo 99 as well, and Criollo, Criollo uh, 98, and the binder is also Nicaraguan, Puro. Um, 
Warped has a very cool story, uh, founded and blended by a guy named Kyle Gellis. Fell in love with our Damani II when he was 18 years old. His father was a big cigar guy and um, has created this successful, cool brand, Warped. So I'm looking forward to smoking this tonight. Great on the retro hill. This is a very delicious cigar. And a nice long finish, actually. Yeah. It's also just so smooth, like yeah. it's been aged. Especially for Nicaraguan tobacco. It's like you said, you know, when you get a shape like this that's so hard to find, it's pretty special. Yeah. The Vitola itself. So what are you guys getting flavor-wise? I think Puba's call-outs were kind of on the money. Yeah. Nutmeg is pretty accurate. A little leathery? A little bit. Coffee, maybe. I'm a bit concerned. <laughs> oh, oh. Why? Puba hasn't said a word. <laughs> no, I really like it. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Phew. How can you not like this? <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> Rooster's I mean, relieved. really good. <laughs> Yeah, I like really it a lot. Nice. I yeah. mean, so far, there's nothing here that's... Yeah. So I had this in my tower. I bought this probably about a month ago when we were starting to stock up on on cigars to do for the pod. Um, and uh, it's been sitting in my tower. I didn't even dry box these because I, I just put them at the higher point in my tower. They've been sitting at like 62 mm -hmm. for a few weeks. And I look at the burn line. I mean, it's just perfect. Yeah, it's pretty razor sharp. It's perfect. So really benefits. So far, so good. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Forgive me. What's the wrapper on this? It's Nicaraguan. Okay. Yeah, everything. This is a Nicaraguan Puro, mm. which in its flavor profile, especially on the light, it's surprising to say that because it's not giving you a, it's kind of reminding me maybe more like of the uh, uh, the Ashton VSG. I get zero, profile. there is zero harshness to this cigar. It is impeccably smooth. VSG, but on the fuller side. Yeah, it's on the fuller side, and it has the sharpness um, if you retrohale it through the nose, even at this point. You know, the of retro a, of, a, yeah. of a Nicaraguan. The retrohale, you do get a bit of a, a pinch in the nose, but on a typical draw, excellent. You think this is fuller than the VSG? I, I, do, I think so. I, I do, think this is, I don't think this is as full. I think this is much I more think, smooth. And, I, I don't mean smooth, I, yes. The VSG is definitely fuller to me. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't agree had with a that. lot of those. I've only had a couple, but no, that, that had, smokes very padrone like the yes. VSG to me. This like is really medium. intense. This is medium full to yeah. me. That's mm -hmm. full. This would be medium. Oh, you yeah. think VSG is full? Yeah, full. It, it's got oh, a lot yeah, yeah. full in flavor, not in strength. Like a lot of flavor, like very padrone. I think this is giving me a little bit of strength, though. Well, it, it has that Nicaraguan Nicar poke yeah. where the Ashton VSG is a Dominican, Dominican cigar. So there's a little bit of a difference there. But overall, this is, you know, to start is is, so, is, a, is a pretty medium affair. Mm. I like the, when I was researching the cigar, the brand story on their website. Their website's very nice, by the way. It's kind of right in line with what I like to see on a site. I, you know, I'm a little crazy. But um, Maestro del Tiempo means master of time. Uh, and it was born, they, as they say, from several years of scouring the depths of Aganorsa through their vast lineage of regions, farms, uh, and their lots to make the blend happen. And they say that you need, the ma you need to master time to create the ideal cigar. And this is living proof. And are, I got to say that well, this is a lining so far. Good yeah. marketing. Uh, are these aged at all? Any age? There's no age statement on mm. them as far as I can see. Uh, there's certainly no date on the box or anything. Um, it has yeah, to be really somewhat. Nice. It has, it has to, be. to be. It's so smooth. The tobaccos, I'm sure, are aged a couple of years. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't taste that fresh tobacco. No. You know, you don't get ammonia. those flavors. No yeah. ammonia at all. No. The draw on this is that perfect amount of resistance you get. Like, you know, I think of that, like when you get an 898 that just has a slight bit of resistance. Yep. That is, it's just perfect. It's perfectly rolled, well constructed. See, my, high marks so far. My temptation with a cigar like this is to smoke it very fast because I'm really liking it a lot. I got to slow down. In fact, I need to touch it up because of that. I have to say the construction is really something because as much as I love Lonsdale's, and this is true of really all of them, I find that probably half the time the draw is a little snugger than I would ideally like if I could somehow have someone roll it the way I would prefer it to mm -hmm. smoke. This is flawless. Like I wouldn't change this if every single Lonsdale smoked like this, <laughs> just from a construction standpoint, it, I would be so thrilled. Sure. Yeah. It's really good, really good construction on it. It's very good. 
and for the price, which is outrageous. I mean, I, as I'm also doing what Rooster did and putting one in my cart. <laughs> I mean, I just found it for seven and change a stick. Wow. Can you guys, guys put one my, in there for me, too? My, <laughs> <laughs> it is episode 69. Do that for Ben. Yeah, my, do it for my, me. Well, yeah. I think my my prediction is this. The, I, I think this, this is going to pick up in strength. I think this is just the beginning i'm my fingers are crossed that it just maintains or improves from where it is right now and it's going to be a very very high value cigar for sure you know i wouldn't mind if the strength increased but if the smoothness continued i think that would have the high marks for me as long as it remains smooth the aroma at the burn line it's, is impeccable you're getting a ton of nutmeg like puba said at the burn perfect line. little vanilla yeah so boys we'll go to the uh the pairing in a minute a um, couple weeks ago, we did the and we did our kind of run through of the top twenty five cigars of twenty twenty two from Cigar Aficionado, and a couple listeners asked, actually two listeners asked, uh, if we had seen the top twenty five list from Cigar Journal, which is we before we came on air, uh, we were talking about a little bit. Um, certainly, a, a really really well respected publication, really high quality publication, but ex US outside the U S is very very popular hmm. um it's it's really really well done oh, yeah and nick hammond is a staff writer yeah nick hammond uh, the author uh he wrote that book what is it called around the world in 80 cigars um yep. yeah he's a contributing author there cool. and he knows his stuff yeah yeah i find the magazine to be really high quality so um so yeah let's uh let's dig in a little bit onto the uh, top 25 list of 22 from cigar journal and then we'll take a few breaks here and drink some uh drink some beer some delicious beer. Yeah. All right. So number 25, the 1502 Anniversario number 10, which is a ring gauge of 50 by 6. So it's a Toro. And uh, it's by AJ Fernandez. Never heard of that cigar before, the 1502. Nope. You guys hear that? No. Number 24, Great Wall, the Mao series, which is owned. Uh, it's an, the owner is a ch uh, China Tobacco. Sichuan, um, out of the Dominican. This one's really interesting. It's a 50 ring gauge by six and a quarter. I guess that's a Toro or a double Robusto or something. What's it called? Kung Pao? <laughs> <laughs> Kung Pao Chicken Series. It's the Great Wall, the Mao Series. What's interesting about this, the binder of this cigar is from Indonesia. Oh, boy. Ah. Did they fly it on a balloon <laughs> <laughs> from Indonesia back? And bundles? <laughs> <laughs> right into the Dominican. <laughs> right into the Dominican. <laughs> wow. That's an interesting uh, interesting note there that's from Indonesia, the binder. All right, number 23 from Platinum Nova Cigar, the Leo 11 Edición Limitada from Nicaragua with an Ecuador Ecuadorian binder. Or excuse me, wrapper on that. Uh, 54 ring gauge by 6 inch. It's a big cigar. Mm. Never heard of these. Never heard of these, yeah. Yeah. This one we've definitely heard of. Number 22, the Liga Pravada from Drew Estate. Unico, Siri, Year of the Ox. Again, another big one, 54 ring gauge by six inches. Rooster, you know that line well. Have you seen that? Yeah? No? Well. Okay. I take it back. I've just had the Liga number nine. I mean, that's about yeah, it. Yeah, us too. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I just got to pause here. I, I think I think Pagoda has. Uh, yeah, he might know that. I think now. he knows a little bit What's more. wrong? This Thanks. cigar is excellent. Good. I agree. This cigar is excellent. We're a half inch in, and it's really performing extremely it's, it's well. It's getting sweet all of a sudden. It, that's you know, I, that's in why a I stopped. Great way. Yeah. It has this um, desserty type flavor, um, almost it, like a, it does, like an eye of the shark type of uh, baking spice. Baking, a little not bit. spice yeah. though. It's like, like baking biscuits. Uh, yeah, like a biscuit or a tea like biscuit, a croissant or something. or something. I mean, to your point, Giz, honestly, if this could stay like this the whole way through, this will be one of the best New World sticks I've ever had. Yeah, 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 yeah. this is very it's crazy good. to say, but I really mean one that. of the best New World sticks. New Worlds I've ever had. Yeah. If yeah. it can stay like this, if it can stay like this, I'm not. I'm. I'm kind of with you. This is a very, very promising start. There's no doubt. I need to shout out that listener while we get a chance. There's no I will. doubt. I will. The mm -hmm. start here is just. I mean. This is pleasurable, and we need more recommendations. Yes, oh, yeah. this is this yeah, is keep, why keep we need this Dude. is why we need listener recommendations Absolutely. because we would have never reached for this cigar simply because we're not aware of it. Yeah. So you know, thank you to Lizard Nation because this is this is exactly what we're going for. 
if this stays like this, that listener needs to officially join our tasting <laughs> panel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is this is excellent. And well, I love, I mean, not not that it matters, but I, I, my my assessment would be the same. But I love the band. Yeah, yeah, me too. too. It's old very classic. They're not trying that too they're hard. They're not trying too hard. It's they old just school. put a band on it. It's like uh, for the listener who who doesn't know what it looks like. It's um again, I I call back. It looks like a classic like H. Upman band in a way, or Partagus with it's gold with a really deep red, very very subtle. Uh, it just says Maestro del Tiempo on it. Yep, Master of Time. Mm, this is really good. It's really good. <laughs> I think we're going to be saying that hopefully all night. I hope so. Yeah, this is very satisfying. I mean, the burn line. Look at the burn. Look at the construction, dude. It's razor sharp. Well, yeah, you got to give it credit for that. Wow. All right, cigar journal. Back to it. Number twenty-one from J.C. Newman, the American Double Robusto. It's called fifty-six ring gauge by five and a half inches. Now that is just a cigar I have no interest in, Mm-mm. just from a size standpoint. Mm-mm. Fifty-six by five and a half, like yeah. It's like a little football. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so far, every single one that you have named like, have been like 52, 54, 56 ring gauge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what's popular. Now, with that being said, from Maya Selva Cigars, Nicaraguan Puro, it's called the Cumpe Lancero, 38 ring gauge by 7 inches. Another one I've never heard of. Yeah. I haven't heard of most of these. Yeah. yeah. It's all a head scratcher to me. I mean, except that Liga, I haven't heard of any of them. Yeah. Well, maybe, well the, just maybe, the marker we know. Right? Maybe these are new worlds that are distributed in Europe maybe. more broadly than some of the new worlds that are distributed here. Huh. I'm just hypothesizing that Cigar Journal is reviewing new. some of these new world sticks aren't as widely distributed. Yeah, maybe very here. well could in be. In the States, yeah. In the States. Yeah. Hmm. All right, number 19 from Principal Cigars, the Martinique. Lancero, another Lancero, 39 ring gauge by seven and a half. Mm. Nice to see some smaller ring gauge cigars appearing. Yeah. Ecuadorian wrapper, Dominican binder, and filler from Dominican and Nicaraguan, uh, Nicaragua. And here's a good question for you, Rooster. It's made in the Kellner Boutique Factory. Do they also oh, make so cologne? Do you think that that could be so related I, to uh, Henrik Kellner? Henrik or Maybe. his son from, from formerly of Davidoff? Does it say Henrik? Kellner? It doesn't. It just says Kellner Boutique Factory. We should look Form- into that. If that's the case, I'd be interested in trying. Say anything that. else like formerly associated with mm-hmm. Davidoff or no? I mean, unless there's more than one Kellner yeah, who blends cigars. Yeah, makes cigars. Not to interrupt, but your retrohale, if you give it a shot now, it's very smooth. No more bite at all on that. Oh yeah, that's excellent. It's very very nice. So that cigar might be worth a try if it's got anything to do with Kellner. Yeah, and that's a brand I've never heard of. So I'm gonna look. I'm gonna earmark that one. Um, you know, again, because we're kind of in a Lancero Lonsdale phase on the pod here. So yeah, and I think the, the, I think we should review the one of the Caldwell. Yeah. Yes. Lonsdales. We talked about that. We, we have, did. We should do the Caldwell Lonsdale. Puba has those in his uh, in his uh, tower secretly. High. Yeah, you said in you like way. Caldwells, right? Well, I've had some. Mm-hmm. I mean. Um, and they're pretty good. They really are. You should try them. I mean, it's been a while, but. Hmm. Um, this cigar is. <laughs> it's, it's off the charts. It's, it's wow. excellent. <laughs> so this is a shocker right now. Quick thing on that, uh, that Kellner Boutique Factory. So the Davidoff guy, is he older? Yes, Henrik. Yeah. Okay, so he apparently must have a son with the exact yes. same name. And he was well, he was blending at Davidoff after the father. They both left. Okay. So this factory, it says after 18 years of working with his father, Henrik Kellner uh, Jr. opened the Kellner Boutique Factory in 2012. There you so go. So it is the same family, that factory okay. that that's from. It's good to know because I mean they are farmers. I mean they, they grow a lot of tobacco. Yeah, and, and Henrik and Kellner is responsible for so much of the Davidoff that we love. What's the um, what's the Vitola on that? It's a Lancero. Uh, it's a Lancero, thirty nine by seven and a half. Maybe worth trying. I think it might be what's, because of the history. What's, what's the marca? What's what's the brand? It's it's called Principal, and it's the Martini. It's like Martini, Q U E Lancero Martinique Martinique. Yeah, uh, you know. I'm it's trying a, here. It's babe. a destination. So. <laughs> 
Sorry, did he call it Martini Eek? Yes. No, I said Martini Eek. <laughs> no, he the, said Martini Eek. <laughs> <laughs> now he's proceeding to put the ashtray in his lap. Yep. <laughs> Pulling a pagoda. He's still trying to get over the Super Bowl, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the shake. Oh. Let's I'm move ignoring it. that comment. Yes, move it along. All right, moving along. Number 18. Grease the pole. <laughs> <laughs> it is episode 69. Uh, we did one of these recently, the La Roma de Cuba. It's mm. called the Passion Box Pressed Torpedo. This is what's interesting about this. So it's a 54 ring gauge by six and an eighth. Nicaraguan Puro. Uh, distributed and owned by uh, Ashton. They roll at my father, like we talked about with the uh, the Mia Moore we did. But what's interesting is because of the, uh, you know, in the U.S., the Cuban brand names can be used here, even the ones that don't mm-hmm. exist anymore. Outside the U.S., though, they're not allowed to use the name La Aroma de Cuba. So they, outside the U.S., it's called Del Caribe. Wow. Wow. The whole line. Huh. Never knew that. Yeah. Interesting. uh Interesting one. Um, nice looking cigar, though. Great band on it. Torpedo. All right, number 17. This is definitely one we could talk quite a bit about. The Davidoff Dominicana. Oh, yeah. Uh, they did this one in Toro. We're, we're fans of the Robusto, but uh, it's a 54 ring gauge by six inches. 17, huh? Yeah, with a pigtail on it. Mm. I don't, the Robustos don't have a pigtail, but the Toro does. I haven't had the Toro. Yeah, I think they all do. I don't know. I don't think the Robustos have a, to- a pigtail. Do I don't think so. No? I don't think so. And I've never short? had a Toro. I think the short Robusto does. Mm, maybe. I don't know. We'll look. So we've been buying a lot of those. The uh, Oh, yeah. The Dominicana Robusto, because, you know, they're scarce. You know, they're Fully stocked on those. Yeah. What are they, seven years aged or something? I don't know. Rooster would know. 2014. Yeah. Eight years aged? Yeah, it says 2014 on the band. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But they're running out of them. To the point where they don't have boxes for them anymore. Well, we know oh, why. that's right. <laughs> pagoda. Pagoda. The pagoda. <laughs> he smokes that cigar he does. every <laughs> single day. It's amazing. And, and Dave. Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Ediov. Ediov. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right, number 16 from PDR Cigars, another one we haven't heard of. The A. Flores Connecticut Valley Reserve Azul in Churchill. It's 50 ring gauge by 7 inches. That is a big... Cigar. That's ridiculous. 57 seven ring by, gauge? No, uh, 50 ring gauge by 7 inches. Ugh. It's a long cigar. Yeah. Hmm. I'm having trouble going through this list because I'm really, like, I want to be drawing this cigar more oh, often yeah. than I am. Yeah. This is really, really excellent. All right, number 15, and then we'll pause here from United Cigar, the Garofalo La Familia Connecticut Epicure, which is a, <laughs> another one we haven't heard of. 54 ring gauge by 6 inches. Uh, a combination of Nicaraguan tobacco and the wrapper is Ecuadorian. Hmm. Pretty cool looking cigar. There are just so many new world cigars out there. As Puba says, it's a f- vortex. Yeah. Just a vortex of cigars. Yeah, we could do this podcast for a thousand years, I think, and not yeah. do them all. You know, and the beauty of the whole Cuban line is you've got the, like you guys have said before this, the, the, the Habanos catalog. You know, you know what you're getting. There's a list that's all identified. You, you know what to pursue. War, new so, worlds, you're like entering into deep waters. But I remember like a couple of years back, the FDA was coming down on new brands. It would take like $100,000 to put out a new. That's true. Is that but, no longer but, the case? What is what is happening? I mean, all these brands, I haven't even heard of all these. That I don't coming know. Out. I mean, are they spending that much to, that was supposed to be 100, 100 grand for one Batola. So at our for former each. club, that's true. I so don't, I don't think that that's. It was maybe, maybe six maybe years ago, pass. five years ago. Yeah. It didn't every pass. new, every new Vitola, every new Vitola. Yeah, that's you were paying you a t- hundred grand. Sure. I thought it was yeah, for that, per Vitola. That was a bill. I think that didn't pass. Yeah, it didn't God. get through. Thank God. Or it was like an mm. FDA initiative that they're still that, fighting. That would have killed every single boutique cigar. That's this is true. Out. I thought. I think it would kill even even for Fuentes and Padrones. That's yeah. a that's a high cost oh, to bring yeah. something to market oh, and then yeah. to potentially have it fail i mean that's really expensive really expensive mm. yeah it's it's un, it's not tenable it's not tenable i think there's a minerality to this too that's starting to develop you know i have uh, there's a little bit of a minerally taste really? it's a little salty it, it i i like the cigar very much yeah, yeah it's really good would you say it's cubanesque yeah, i'm getting for me uh, the fruit 
notes are very Cuban-esque for me. I'm not getting any minerality, but I am getting a good saltiness that I love. It's like a saltiness, yeah. There's oh, yeah. A little bit it's of there. A, there's a little bit of a salt, and that salty makes it, thing that's happening yeah. that's really nice. It's it's kind of balanced. Very. It's delivering some some of those baking spices we mentioned at the beginning of the cigar. Mm-hmm. So for me, this cigar is um, is pretty balanced. It's mm-hmm. it's delivering a pretty balanced experience, which which I like. To, to Rooster's question, is this Cuban-esque? I would actually say it is. Yeah. The yeah. reason I say that is if I were to smoke this blind, I, one, wouldn't guess it's a Nicaraguan. Um, and two, this has like Upman dessert-like notes yeah. that I would maybe be very you know easily fooled that this could be some form of an Upman. There's absolutely some yeah, of that DNA there. Yeah, yeah the only thing that would, would be the on the retro hell, that little bit of bite that gives it that Nicaraguan tell, but yes, on the palate, you're a hundred percent correct. I mean, it's not, it, it, it's, it's really quite, quite nice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's to me feels full flavor, kind of medium body, but smooth. Uh, I mean, full flavor, medium strength, um, at this point, which is pretty nice. I think this cigar has good aging potential. Mm. You know, if you let it sit for like a few years and go back and revisit, and that's such know, a and it's such a light investment to do it too. Yeah. I mean, even if it doesn't work, yeah. I mean, it is. It's it's look not at, expensive. Yeah. And look at the combustion. Honestly. Yeah, the smoke output is it's brilliant, awesome. yeah. and it's it's going well with our beer tonight. Well, Bam Bam, you know, you and I are on the same page. Yes, sir. Let's try this. I've never had this. Uh, the boys have been. Uh, the boys is in uh, Senator and Rooster have been raving about Athletic Brewing Company, and Senator, you brought us an IPA tonight. Tell us about it. That's right. It's the uh, Run Wild IPA. Wow, that's good. It drinks like a alcoholic IPA. It's a little thinner than a classic IPA uh, yes. for me. I'm a huge IPA guy, so this doesn't go down like a traditional IPA. Yeah. But but. It's got some fruit notes, and there's a little bit of a um, tanginess, which you get in a lot of IPAs, which I love. It just to me, what this tastes like, and I don't mean this offense. Don't take offense to this, guys who love this peach. No, it's got like a. It just tastes like a. Um, tastes like a grapefruit, like mm. like a grapefruit brew of some kind. Well, but that's, it's that's what a lot of IPAs taste like. Yeah, well, it's got that hoppy flavor. It's hop. Yeah. That's the hop that's, flavor. Yeah, I get a lot of peach note in this thing, for me. So I, I say that because I'm actually not a big IPA guy. Um, I'm wrong. I, Bam is. I know Bam <laughs> I drinks am. a lot of IPA. Oh, Giz, yeah. I've, I don't think I've seen you drink an IPA. And Grinder's a big IPA guy. He would love this. Yeah. Is he really? He I, is. I, oh, is yeah. He, really? I feel like he's more yeah. of like a malty guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, Pilsner, maybe? Think, yeah. yeah. He drinks yeah. Wrench. Wrench beer is the Wrench is an IPA? IPA. But that's like the one IPA I would drink. It's like not super hoppy. Yeah. Um, true, and I not guess. as bitter, a little sweeter. Mm. Um, so like that I can do, that's my speed, but a lot of IPAs that are just super, super hoppy, I don't like, and some can be really, really heavy, which I also just hate. It's like, you know, you have one of these heavy IPAs, you feel like you just had like a giant meal. It's just oh, too dude. much. So I like that this is actually a little like on the lighter side, uh, because it's more sessionable as, you know, beer drinkers say, mm-hmm. like you can put back several of these and feel great still, yeah. um, very much like, you know, any of the lighter beers that we like or Yingling where you can, you know, just drink several of them. So I like it from that standpoint. And I give Athletic Brewing Company a lot of credit because uh, during dry January is when I had started experimenting with uh, non-alcoholic beer, getting in, into Rooster's world. And um, I think Athletic makes like the best non-alcoholic beer, just that they have like a range. Like they've got this golden ale that's like very light, great summer beer, but still has just enough flavor. Um, I love this. I was just reading a little bit. I was so curious, like where is this stuff even made? Um, they have two, uh, brewing facilities, one where they originally started in Connecticut, um, outside of Stanford and another in San Diego. And they are the two only facilities in the world that exclusively brew non-alcoholic beer. Mm. It's pretty wild. I was going to say, it is an an impressive feat to me that six years ago, they started a beer company that only brews non-alcoholic beers. I think that's fascinating. Agree. Because even six years ago, 
It is. It a was big, very different. But it's a big market now, isn't it? It today it is. But yeah. six years ago, that's true. They 10 took a years risk. Ago, they was took a, a big risk. Yeah, there's risk now. It's true. I yeah. mean, Rooster was the market six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at one point, the only thing you could get was Odul's. 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 I remember that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like yeah. Odul's, and then after, since that point on. Every single beer manufacturer, I think, has it's a smart. non-alcoholic beer. It's and, smart. you know, the Guinness, as we did on the podcast, that is, that is, like, it's a perfect match to the alcoholic We need to give version. one to Puba to try. Yeah, I'm curious. Have you had that, He Puba, would love it. The non-alcoholic Guinness? I'm sure I'd love it. It's he would. He would. He would. Yeah. I know that. I mean, this beer tasted really good. Yeah. yeah it's really good. Um, so this is called the Run Wild IPA. So do they give each of their beers, like, a cool name or? They do. That's their mm-hmm. thing? And you said that this is only 60 calories. 65 calories. That's, that's crazy. Thing that's wow. nuts. Mrs. Bam Bam would love that I'm drinking this <laughs> because I tend to overdo it. <clears throat> yeah. I do. Really? And then the morning after, I feel awful. Mm-hmm. This is nice. But yeah, they're sort of signature beers. It's this, the Run Wild IPA, the Upside Dawn, that golden ale I was talking about that's lighter, great summer beer. They have a Free Wave Hazy IPA, which I haven't tried that I think is a bit fuller than this. Um, and then they have an all-out like porter. Um, I would like that. I yeah, haven't I'll tried that, that yet. Yeah. What is a what is a porter exactly? What is a, what kind of profile is a porter beer? It's closer to a stout. stout. Yeah, yeah, stout. Dark okay. beer. I yep. see. Full flavor, heavier. And it's like they, a stout, but nuttier, not as bitter. Got it. And then the well, isn't Guinness a stout? It, it is. It is, but a but light there's stout. but it's a very very light light. Guinness draft, and then there's Guinness, Guinness in the bottle, which or Guinness is stout. stout and draft actually. So I guess the yeah. bottle's the real stout, mm. the stout and then yeah. the draft is that like light is the lighter version of. It's I guess still technically a stout, but it's not doesn't not it's not like drinking a, a you know uh, an anchor ste- an anchor stout or mm-hmm. one of these microbrew stouts that's uh, yeah. oatmeal stout. You know, like Anchor uh, Steam, I think they make a they make a nice porter. Am I right? Yeah, they do. Back in the you know in the boom of these microbreweries, I used to drink a lot of uh, a lot of these. Sierra Nevada was very new in the early nineties. Anchor Steam was very new. Um, That oatmeal stout beer, whoever made that, that was very new. And those were they were um, they were great. Um, and they all got like bought up by the big guys, right? All of those companies. I think so. Like Sierra Nevada definitely did. Um, Dogfish, oh. di- Dogfish, uh, Dogfish Head used did. to love Dogfish Head. Yeah, great. Did beer. they get bought? Yeah, oh yeah, I think so. Okay, then I mean all of. Them I think they all way. have been purchased. Obviously, mm-hmm. Sam Adams. I guess at one point was kind of an off the beaten path, but now they're massive. Oh yeah, uh, well they were micro. They were they really forged the, the yeah. whole market. Um, and that was, you know, in the early days of, 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 uh, in the nineties, it's early nineties, right? Yeah. That was, they made great beer. They did yeah. still do. I mean, I get, I, they probably still do. I just do. don't drink a lot, as much beer as I used to. Um, they've got a great winter ale. It's very yeah. nice. Yeah. And we, I used to, rem- I remember picking up the variety packs. They do a winter pack and yeah. you pick that up. I used to they like probably the, uh, still do that. The Sam Summer Ale. And the oh, Sam the, Sam, oh, the Summer Ale is good. Yeah. Very oh, good. We would get like a keg of that at my fraternity. That was like a splurge. It was awesome. <laughs> that was sure. within budget. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. That, that was a, they, they, I, I, I mean, I don't drink enough of it now to, to editorialize on or mm. add any commentary on how it's changed. But um, the more I sip this, the more I like it. And the more I puff on this, the more I like it. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. It's, it's, I'm getting a, out of the cigar. I'm getting a little bit of a buttery thing. Yeah, and like Senator said, it is getting sweeter for me as well. Yeah. So, it's creamier, um, actually, for me. Creamier rather than buttery. I have to go back to, again, I just find the whole um, business model of a company just brewing non-alcoholic beer, I find that so bold at the time. I find it fascinating. Like, they clearly saw what the potential was and that's a big risk they knew yeah. there was a mark well maybe maybe not right they 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 viewed they knew there was a market there mm. um everything's a risk in business but sure they knew there was a market there clearly and um i'm not sure if you guys remember they like, shot the lane five yeah. years ago there was a commercial i think it was miller I don't, i'm not sure which major maker 
they had guys and girls at the gym and then they'd end up at the bar and they're drinking this non-alcoholic beer that Miller made and they're kind of making it it's a healthy beer type of a thing yeah this kind of I think falls in that line because it's because of the name maybe it's Miller Miller Light is it Miller Light yeah I think so I've never well, tried it, but uh, yeah. it's a thing. I, I think know. what's I think, <laughs> I you know, one of the things that's kind of <laughs> that, spoiler alert that has alcohol in it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think light. that one of the <laughs> things that's interesting about this, which uh, uh, this honestly is maybe the maybe the second or third non-alcoholic beer I mean I've ever tried because because <laughs> well, yeah, it's not something you. that interests me, but 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 um, you know because you can drink it in the car. You can. <laughs> you, could, you could you could drink it in the car, um, but I think it's interesting in that it it delivers a, a flavor. It, there's flavor here. Oh, somebody somebody so who doesn't there, drink beer, and you get the same taste. So it's kind of like you're drinking beer with the guys. So you feel like you know you're not, you're not, not missing out. Yeah, you're, you're not, not left, left out. out. Yeah, you're that, not missing what, out. You're that's not what saying. Yeah. Th- th- yeah, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that that like you you're having a beer and it's it tastes like beer i i I think some of the previous non-alcoholic beers really didn't deliver on that and they're kind of delivering this 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 thing where it's like okay well i can actually order this have it i I, i'm not into alcohol or i'm driving whatever your reason personal reasons are for not wanting alcohol in your beer and you like the taste yeah and it tastes good so i think that's pretty cool in that it actually tastes like a beer. I yeah. mean, it tastes like a legitimate and, beer. And I think it delivers it that. It gets close to it. I mean, it's not, you know, you can t- you can kind of tell there's no alcohol in there. If you sure. really, were, it's definitely lighter than a traditional, there's no bite to it really. But it's delicious. I, I mean, I it like tastes it, really, really good. It has the crispiness, like, the ref- like with a burger, I'd be very satisfied with this. Because sure. that's why. For me, when I reach for a beer with a burger, it's not because I want the alcohol. I want that crispy, crispy compliment, right? That refreshing compliment to the fatty, you know, burger you're eating or whatever it may be. But from sure. the point of view of lifestyle, I've found whenever I have a burger and a true beer, I feel totally bloated. Yeah, too much. This after a beer, you feel great. You feel per. I mean, yeah. I, 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 yeah. And you could take three of these down, not a problem. Yeah. Another great non-alcoholic beer is a Brooklyn Lager. Brooklyn, oh, uh, it's yeah. a blue can. Yeah. It's uh, I think it's called extra hop, like mm-hmm. maybe it's just hoppy, mm. uh, delicious. They make a few different ones. They do. Yeah, yeah. This is really good. It's Senator, a lager. Senator gave me one that was a yellow can. It's the only other athletic brewing company beer that I had. That's the summer one I was talking about. Initially, it's very lemony, which I love. But initially, it was hard to drink. But after four or five sips, it was delicious. Yeah, really super refreshing. Very I just I like the idea too. Like you know, we're here on a Monday night. We record on Monday nights. Mm-hmm. I liked it. We're gonna have this, and it's like I could drink three or four of these, feel really good, and like you said, Bam, wake up in the morning like totally, yeah, ready to go. That's what I loved. I mean, this was the first year during the Super Bowl. Normally, especially, I didn't really start drinking beer until I had a child. Like before that, as I think a lot of us here, I, I was not a beer drinker, but. Um, during the Super Bowl, that was always like the one day of of the year. Regardless, I was always I would always drink beer. You know, it's a long game. You put back several beers. You don't always feel great the next morning. No, I drank these the whole Super Bowl, and I felt wonderful in the morning. Nice. It was great. I still got the same flavor, taste, enjoyment. And I woke up feeling wonderful. I'm all in. Mm. I'm all in on this. So, boys, mm. before we get back to Cigar Journal. This cigar, we're about, what, end of the second third coming into the, or excuse me, end of the, the first third coming into the second third, maybe around halfway-ish, um, is getting better for me. This is excellent. You can't say that this is not a great cigar. It's that a great is, cigar. Yeah. It's a it's smoking like a premium cigar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, this, this is not smoking like some value budget stick where right. you have, like, several little complaints, but some things that, you know, check the boxes and you say, okay, on balance, this is okay. It's hitting everything I wanted yeah. to. Yeah. The flavors that this cigar delivers, you can't say it's like a under ten dollar steak. No, you know it's this. Like this is delivering twenty five dollars. It's a great recommend. Great yeah, recommend. It really is. It's it's uh, it's very good. Yeah, it's very very good. And I'm just so happy. It's a lawn still. Yeah, same. So and happy in, about and that. a new world because it's available. Yep. All right, boys. Let's get back to the 
Cigar Journal, top 25 of 2022. We're to number 14, the second appearance from Drew Estate on the list. I've heard about this one. We actually had a couple listeners mention this, uh, not the specific Vitola, but the 20-acre farm. Have you guys heard about this? Nope. Um, so it's a, this specific cigar, it's the Toro. It's 52 ring gauge by 6 inches, released in 2021. But apparently this is harvested from a specific section of Drew Estate, a 20-acre farm, mm. that the tobacco only comes from there. It's some sort of more premium, I guess. Like maybe it's like the 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 little brother to the Liga line as far as quality. Mm. Um, but people seem to be really loving this, the 20-acre farm. It's a uh, Ecuadorian wrapper, Honduras binder, and Nicaraguan filler made at uh, Drew Estate's factory. So maybe we should try it. Yeah. Number 13, the Placencia Cosecha 149. Santa Fe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do they have a photograph of the cigar? They do. What is the or, wrapper orange? It's an orange, black, and white. Okay, I've had that cigar. Okay, I, so how, how was it? How was it? I had it in the in a. They make a Lonsdale. It's a very small ring gauge. I'll be honest with you. It was quite. It was very good. It was delicious, actually. Really? Yeah. Right, we should give if we're gonna give it was Placencia a little see a shake after our Alma Forte experience. But let it, me say, it needs to then be that. let me say something about Placencia. So I go to another club not far from here. It's a Placencia destination, but he's got a ton of other cigars, and his humidor has like improved dramatically. I think Placencia has also changed since the last time we had that huge Alma Fuerte on your deck, Brewster. They've changed their branding. The cigars look different. I think they've upgraded their game. Really? I'm guessing. It's a guess. I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> well. For the, com- for the company's sake. It is, I agree. You could it's, only go up from... Uh, it's so half. freaking popular. That that whole line is so popular right now. So, guys, can you tell me how you really feel, please? Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, that particular cigar, w- the octagonal, the... I didn't have... I didn't, have, I didn't have the octagonal. None of us have. We had the uh, that Alma Fuerte. That it's monster. Like, it was a monster. Kind of like a Salamone, but yeah. longer. Never, never that, ending. It, yeah. it took two hours. It was... Four hours. It was... Uh, <laughs> It was a dumpster fire. <laughs> we should try. We should try one of those. We should I try this one. We, Let's we try the have to, though, because so, in all seriousness, I can't believe how many times now I encountered, let's say, a new member at our lounge or yeah. someone I meet at somewhere smoking a cigar, and so many people love Placencia. They're cigars. so popular. It's it's it's. it's I insane. have a bad impression because of that one bad experience with that yeah. stick. We have to try something else. Or just do you ask them like which one have you had or which? Well, which is your... I, I did dangerously, <laughs> and Pagoda was next to me when this oh, happened. Boy. Oh, he doesn't. <laughs> and he doesn't I hold back, kid man. You not. The guy took out the octagonal one and he handed it to Pagoda. <laughs> and I, I mean, we're both trying so hard not to just completely lose it. I don't want to offend the guy. Like, Did it's he smoke? nothing against him. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's literally that cigar that did Pagoda described. Uh, yeah, he did. And? Not Pagoda. The, the, the guy. Oh, who okay. Gave it to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pagoda yeah. just put it away like, oh, thank you. You know, Pagoda with his accent, very polite. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. And did he say, oh, my Lord? My Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, oh my Lord. Lord. So that, uh, the, so the Placencia Cosage 149 Santa Fe that they did was a 60 ring gauge. Oh, forget about it. By four and seven eighths. No. I, I would never even touch it's that. It's unsmokable. I like Hard the Lonsdale pass. idea. Yeah. I like the, I'll, you know, I'll pick given up what a few. we're doing right now. I'll pick up a few. Maybe we do that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, Honduran Puro, actually, <laughs> which is really, really interesting. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have to try it. You know, we do have some listeners that have emailed, like, hey, you guys need to try Placencia, and then you know, they'll say, I, we kn- I know how you feel about the Alma Fuerte, but you got to try some of their stuff. So I, th- I think we need to do it. We'll do it. All right. Another one I haven't heard of, uh, number 12, uh, is the Villager North America. I've heard of that. It's called the Exclusivo. USA 2021 review. How dare style. they take that name? Seriously. There needs to be a lot. It's funny. It's a, bo- it's a box gonna, press, too. Oh, I'm going to get Oh, Jesus. It's a box press. So that's a 52 ring gauge by five. So it's very close in uh, size to <laughs> Senator's Exclusivo. Yes, sir. I'm going to get my JD just to represent Padron and sue this is company. It, is, this it is, senators? Cool. is it Senators or Roosters? Oh, I mean, here we oh. go. <laughs> Damn, I like it. You know, I mean, he was smoking in 1940, for fuck's sake. I... <laughs> Wasn't born then. <laughs> You're a vampire, man. You've been around forever. 
<laughs> Jesus. Wow. Bam Bam with the shank today. That, that's a compliment. That's See, not a shank. Ro- what Rooster does is he'll keep that in the back oh, of his Oh, I know. Mind. <laughs> He's like a fucking computer. He won't forget that. And he will find you. He will hunt just, you down and find you. Just you wait. <laughs> so that one is a uh, Ecuadorian rapper and uh, the biller, uh, binder and filler, are both from uh, Dominican Republic. Pooba, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. No, no, I was listening intently. <laughs> I have nothing to say. So this one, um, I think we did this on the podcast, actually. Number 11, the Avo Synchro Caribe in Tora. Wasn't that the blind we did? No. No. What was the blind we did? On episode like nine or something. That's, That's a good question. R Y J. No, yeah, that was a no. That was a Romeo. It was yeah. an Avo something. It, it was, was an Avo, Avo Synchro it was Caribe. It was exactly we did that. that cigar. That cigar it was an R Y J. It was an episode seven. Different what one. did we rate oh, that cigar? Six point four. Meat okay. Can. Yeah, that was bad meat again. And I think it was that ex- exact size. I don't remember exactly. It was a fifty-two by six. I think that's it. The Avo Synchro Caribe. Yeah. I'm sorry. We did the, do an Avo. Yeah, we did that. The Dominicana that's ranked seventeenth is much better than that. I would say that this, this cigar, list is skewed. Sorry. Well, of that course cigar is. is horrible. It is. Because we did that blind, and I also had someone gift Shit. me that Shit. cigar once <laughs> that I will never accept another cigar from. And I don't even think we speak anymore at this point. Ah. That's how bad that cigar was. Okay. Orange. Shit. Orange, band. orange band. Yeah. You, and you, you know who I'm talking about that gifted me that. <laughs> Shit. I have no, no idea. So let me ask you a question. <laughs> when, when someone gives you something that bad, how does it... Does it affect your opinion of the person? No. So uh-uh. here, here's what I will say. Here's <laughs> I don't what I will say. Senator might here's have a what I, I, I'll state my, my position. Oh, boy. This is not going to be good. Okay. 90%. Not of the person, but of their judgment. <laughs> right. Of the person. Those are 90. Not- no. no. See, I'm with Poop on can, can this. I, can I just let him make his right, go ahead. case? 90% of the time, no. It just has nothing about the person I agree. 90% of the time. Just bad judgment. Most of the time, someone just doesn't know what to pick up. I've had people give exactly. me some of the most ridiculous shit you wouldn't even believe, <laughs> but they mean well. The problem is, this person, I was very generous to, as we all are, to guests, particularly at my lounge, and we would spend lots of time there. And this person wanted to thank me for my hospitality. <clears throat> and so after, you know, they would consume a lot of scotch, cigars, all that at my place. They brought me a bottle of scotch that I think anyone who's spent any time with me knows I only like the Macallan 12 Sherry cask, not the double cask. We've talked about this on the pod. We all have that preference. Of course, where they bring the double cask, not the Sherry cask. They've been at my place a thousand times. They've drank bottle after bottle of the Sherry cask. Just get the Sherry. But does that this was, person even know? They do. Oh, oh they this know. person knew. They do. He, they know who I'm talking about. So that was strike one. Strike two then they say, I'm giving all these cigars. I've given this person sharks, all kinds of stuff. And this person, oh, you know, I, I got these the other day. They're, they're pretty good. You should try one. And I know nothing about this cigar. And it's one of the worst cigars I've ever smoked. Now, again, this person I've given plenty of Padrones to. They know I'm a Padron fan. Davidoff, a shark, even a Fuente would have been fine. It's not hard to figure out what New Worlds I smoke. There's no, like, secret code here. Or you, you can't buy them somewhere. So I just don't know why, if you're going to get me an Avo, you get me this shit cigar that we gave, what, like a six? 6.4. Yeah, I mean, I have to hold it against the person at that point. (laughs) I have to. You're doing that because of the person. (laughs) No, no, no. I Just look, when you make an effort and the other person doesn't, I mean, that's not a good thing. I think when someone makes the effort and just doesn't know what they're doing, that's different. I think reciprocation... I think equitable reciprocation. It's not like when when you give something. I, I know for us, like let's just talk about our group. When when I give something to some, someone in this group, there's no expectation of return, right? Mm-hmm. right? But if you guys were to give me something and give me that look in the eye, like, hey, I'm really proud to be giving you this. Excited to give it to yeah, you. Yeah, it should be equitable in quality or experience. Performance. Not money. I don't care about that. But the performance and experience that you're handing someone that hour and a half, you're going to hopefully improve of in their life 
it should be a good experience. It does take knowledge and experience of smoking cigars and knowing what you're what you're buying to do that. It does, but that person smokes Davidoff, Padron, all the true. brands yeah, I name. So they true. didn't give me any of those. This is true. Yeah. You know what? That's, yeah. that's and true. It's, and it's also like how ceremonial are you being about it? Exactly. <laughs> you know, if you're just kind of like, hey. Well, Senator's very ceremonial. Well, no, I no, mean, he's talking not, about the other. Person. I know I'm that. talking about the presentation of it, you know, or in general. Like, if you're kind of like, hey, have this. That's one thing. Or like, oh, try this. Try this or yeah. whatever. Or like, you know, you're at a party and you bring a bottle and they were at a sherry cask and you picked up and you're just like, drop it on their, somebody's bar. I don't think you can get offended at that. No. Or if somebody needs a cigar and that's what you got and you're like, here, then you toss it at them. Mm. But if you're making like, if there's any ceremonial kind of, overture or like, something thank you for all your hospitality that, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like some that, that exactly. then, right then it makes then you should try like, a little harder you should you should try a little harder i mean if you're gonna make a fucking ceremony about it yeah and if it's you know some, what i mean if like, it's like, like, this, like like you know if it's just casual who get you know like, if it's a, a, but if it's a, a guilt driven a like i i'm thankful for something you did or that you know thank you i haven't done enough to say thank you i mean you should deliver something that's sure of decent quality and as we're experiencing tonight it doesn't mean that it costs a lot. No, this is very That's high the quality. Thing. I mean, we've reviewed some sticks, like some of these Lanceros we recently done. Rooster's oh. handed me this stick. It's like seven dollars, and I'm sitting there saying, "Wow, this is a great cigar." I hand, uh, um, I hand, Jesus Gizmo. Christ, I had Gizmo <laughs> the same baby episode sixty nine. Just so you know, <laughs> I had Gizmo the same cigar, and you were like, "Wow, this is a pretty good smoke." Like. You don't have to spend a lot of money to make someone happy with a cigar. No, yeah. that's true. But don't hand them an Avo Synchro, whatever that thing's yeah. called. <laughs> it's a uh, dude. It's Avo number of Fag Avo Fagata. Fagata. <laughs> I got a Fagata about it. Oh, <laughs> Fagata. Rooster nailed it. That's what it was. The Avo Fagato. Uh, is that really what it's called? Yeah. Oh, it I also has an orange band. That's why I got mixed up. Uh -huh. I thought you guys were being facetious. So yeah, that's, that's number eleven. Number. The Avo Synchro Caribe Toro. Uh, and now we are breaking into the top 10 here. Some of these choices, you know, maybe these guys are choosing these Vitolas because they're short smokes or something. There's a lot of big ring gauge cigars, man, that are short. This is the Oliva Siri V Melania Limited Edition 21, 60 ring gauge by four inches. Yeah, I've that, seen that cigar. Whatever. That, that's a, like, whatever. That's like a nub. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a too much i don't I, so here's my thing i don't understand saying i'm gonna have a cigar today and sitting down and smoking a 60 ring gauge cigar by four inches i have a question though for all of you this is an international rating correct uh, yeah it's a publication magazine wasn't it this group that said the larger vitolas the ring gauges are more of an american thing and the rest of the world's really smoking smaller ring gauges no i think the american market drove i see the trend I think the rest of the world up. is picking up I on see, it. I see, I see, got it. But I think that, you know, Americans smoke a lot of cigars. Yeah. Well, I, I thought that, but one of you guys was saying that apparently the Asian market's driving this now. Mm. Well, Asians lo Asian market loves, the, like, big Cohibas. They want to look like a baller yeah. while they're sitting and smoking. Not, exactly. not yeah. so much in Europe, I would say, more. Like, I agree. You know, in yeah. China, you know, mm. so... Yeah, but they sell E2s in Europe. They sell Kanye's in Europe. They sell... They sell 52 ring gauge cigars there a lot and a lot of them, you know, so, but 60, I think anything above really 54, 50, I mean, Agree. boy, oh boy. Even 54 for me, low. I'm not, I just don't love that. that anything ring bigger than an E2, it's, it's, it's too a, much. It's a bit much. E2 yeah. is right where it should be. It's 52, yeah. right? So yeah. Yeah. anything yeah. bigger than the. It's too much. Than that really. Is E two fifty two or fifty four? Fifty four. Yeah. E two is fifty four. Now that Milanio also sells like hotcakes. By the way, Gizmo at the other lounge in Does town. It? it like hotcakes. Yeah, that's a popular Oliva. You know, it's very popular. Yeah, it is. Um, okay, number nine. The uh, we just did this a couple weeks ago. We did what well, we did one of his cigars, AJ Fernandez Enclave Connecticut Figurado. Nice looking cigar. It's a uh, fifty two ring gauge by six and a half. Ecuadorian wrapper and the binder and filler are from Nicaragua. That's a popular cigar. The one note that they said is interesting is this. They said that the smoke of this is buttery and it has the sweetness of cotton candy on the palate. Never okay. called that note out before on a cigar. <laughs> Curious if that's accurate. I don't know that I've ever wanted to call that note <laughs> out on a cigar. 
So number eight is the Flor de Selva Collection Anniversario number 20 in Toro from Maya Selva Cigars. I think there's another one from them on the list. It's a 52 ring gauge by six inch Honduran Puro. Hmm. I'll take a taste. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Senator, We're turning Senator, them. We're Senator's turning them. going buck wild on the, on the non-alcoholic <laughs> beer. It is very good. I kind of want another one, but um, I don't know if you have any more. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, what's interesting about this next one is, given that it's an international public publication, I'm surprised that Cigar Aficionado had three Cuban cigars on the list, obviously primarily American uh, magazine, and this one only had one Cuban cigar mm. on the list, which is the Ramon Iones 40 Carat Regional. It's called the Paises Bajos, obviously a Cuban Puro, 50 ring gauge by seven and a quarter. This is a big cigar i've never heard of it it almost looks like a i think it's a 109 actually uh, it has that shape of the 109 we have those from our cuban trip and i think that we saw these being rolled in la corona we each have a, a stack of them at home a yeah. stack five yeah. well is it five five yeah. <laughs> i thought i had ten <laughs> well okay yeah. you might <laughs> i might I have to get some more I just so yeah the only uh the only cuban i, I grabbed it and ran this. did you try it not yet yeah, I'm letting all my stuff, all the stuff that I brought back, maybe about 30 cigars, but I haven't touched a single one of them. Yeah. All right, number six, the La Aurora Preferi Dos. Yeah. Or, <laughs> have you had that? Ors yeah. Dage 2020, 54 ring gauge by six perfect, inches. Perfecto? No, this is a, uh, this like is a Parejo. on both hands? Nope, it's yeah. a Parejo. Uh, pretty normal looking Toro, 54 by six. Pretty big cigar. Mm. Sorry, guys. I had to just look up the last cigar you said. We got to work on your Spanish before Cuba. Oh, boy. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> just please say it again. The Ramon? The Ramon. The 40, 40 carat. Is that wrong? No, nope. keep going. Edicion, uh, the, the regional edition. Paises Bajos. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what is it? There's the accento over the I. It's <laughs> Paises. Paises. <laughs> well, Jesus. how come how come I'm reading the list? <laughs> Uh, you're so lovable. This is a setup. <laughs> just, just have senator order. When you're there. <laughs> I may have to. When you're there. All right. So before we get into the top five here, boys, we're coming into the last third of the warped Maestro del Tiempo 5205. I can't believe how good this is. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe it. If it finishes like this, and it's it's seeming pretty good. I will definitely be buying a box I will of these say tonight. the strength for me has not picked up. It's been exceptionally consistent. I'm not yeah. complaining about that. No, not at all. Not yeah, it hasn't yeah. picked it up. Has no. Not. So it's a, a good candidate to take all the way down yeah. so far. Really, really enjoyable. It's it's real it's a good cigar. I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm like kind of wanting a little bit more creamy thing going on. It's got a floral thing going on now. Mm -hmm. Do you want Which, more creamy that, because with, it was with, hinting it? With, with, yeah, like, 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 if that's your jam. But I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining about it I at all. The thing that's surprising for me, this is, and I don't really, I don't know how many New World cigars I've ever said this about, but this is kind of a multi multi act play. I, I think we talked about where it started. Then a bunch of us said it's starting to get sweeter. And for a period of time, I was getting tons of like dessert notes. And now it's getting more toward that like leather, earthy, earthy. earthy. Um, also, a profile that I enjoy. There's a journey. Padron esque towards the end. A little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not um, minerally at all, though. It's no, a little floral. No. It gets a little floral for me, too. I agree, Puba. In it, some it, ways. It more coffee notes, like espresso notes towards the end. Yeah, maybe there's a little of that bitter, which isn't a bit not as a bad thing. Like not dark, as a negative, but a darker yeah. chocolate, bitter chocolate kind of thing. I was, I think, I was hoping for like a little more cream, but it's it's good. I mean, I can't complain. It's 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 good. I feel like I'm getting a bit more oomph now in the last third here. Are you? I'm getting I, a little. I more. feel like I'm getting a little bit more. Yeah. Um, it's very, very satisfying. It's a little peppery. It's subtle, though. It's yeah. starting to introduce itself. There's like a little pepper. It's a little subtle, though, for me. But like not crazy. No. 
But it's just like introducing itself down the stretch here, which is good. Excellent. Well, I, I like that when a cigar kind of changes a little bit, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so many of these it's cigars. A little white pepper, maybe a little white pepper thing going on. It's good. It's, so many of these disappointing New World cigars, as we've talked about a thousand times, oh, there are so start many. great. You know, the first inch, first half an inch is excellent. And then it just stops. Yeah. How, how fast are you guys smoking? I am going pretty quick. I think Gizmo and I are about the same. Holy yeah. Christ. Me, me and you are exactly almost at the yeah. same point. You guys smoke. I, I'm, there's so much flavor in this, and it's actually complex. I'm very not, com- no, no. I'm ready to light up another the one. The finish is so strong, <laughs> so satisfying that like I don't need to draw as often with this. I'm just loving it. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I'm enjoying it, too. I'm kind of smoking it fast. Yeah, I want more. Did you guys enjoy the Super Bowl a couple of weeks ago? Extremely competitive. Outstanding game. Very good game. game. Outstanding game. The second half was really good. It was. Yeah. When the Eagles lost their lead, it was really something. (laughs) It sure was. Can we get into this? Because there's a lot to talk about. Let's do the five. Let's finish the five Let's do that. And then I'll give you the guys the indulgence of busting my balls. Because I'm on, look, I'm going to be very friendly to the Eagles because let's go. Go ahead. All right. Top five, Cigar Journal 2022. The number five, Vega Fina. Nicaragua Gran Volcano. I just oh boy, that may as well have been made in Patterson for crying out loud. <laughs> I mean, where are these cigars coming from? There's too many options out there. <laughs> Patterson. It's a 56 ring gauge by five and three eighths. Another big one, man. A lot of these new introduction cigars are just huge. Uh, Nicaraguan Puro, uh, made in the Dominican Republic, which is weird, but yeah, Vega Fina, Nicaragua. All right, number four, first one from Perdomo. We haven't done a Perdomo on the pod. We have not. I think we have to do that. The Inmenso 70 Sun Grown Churchill Boys. Get ready. To 70? 70 ring gauge by wow. seven oh, inches. Brother. Where does oh, it end? God. This is a disgrace. Jeez. That's a disgrace. I'm, 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 I'll, I'll be con- conspicuously absent for that <laughs> review. Yeah, 70 by seven. That is, that's a sin. Oh, yeah. That's like that uh, the baseball bat, 80 by 8. Yeah. It's just horrible. So that's a Nicaraguan Puro. That will never make an appearance on the podcast, I promise you that. <laughs> and following that up at number three, which was number two on Cigar Aficionado's list this year, is Rooster's Favorite, the 60 by Rocky Patel. There you go. Which is just a little bit smaller, 60 ring gauge by six inches. Oh. I mean... Uh, Mexican wrapper on that one, and the binder and filler are Nicaraguan. I mean, I will say just because I'm tired of hearing about this cigar, if we're gonna do a Rocky, we have to just do that. The sixty? Oh, that's sixty <laughs> ring gauge. Sixty? Oh, fuck! It's no, called the me. sixty. It's 60. do they make that in any other? Nothing. It's just I don't that? think so. Do they make a twenty? <laughs> the non-alcoholic beer is going at the center of his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a 60 by 6. Just, wow. Okay, we're coming to the end here. Number two. Wait, the Rocky was what? Number, number three. Number three. It was number two. That, so that was the one that was number two on the uh, Cigar Aficionado list this year. That's so, what I'm saying. It's just crazy to me on two separate lists that somehow this is, unless they're marketing also through Cigar Journal. I thought you said Cigar Journal is good. <laughs> 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 number two is the first appearance from davidoff on the list the winston churchill le 2022 well, second appearance which is you're correct right. sorry about that the okay. minicana was there uh this is a uh it's a little uh perfecto what's it called it's called the winston churchill limited edition 2022 61 ring this gauge is davidoff yeah. yeah 61 by five and seven eighths inches at the center it's 61 yeah yeah but with the obviously with the perfecto you know, it, it feels like uh, the mouth feels a little bit better. I would try it. Yeah, I would definitely try that it's one. like a well, football. Because it's a yeah, Davidoff, we'll try it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, boys, number one. Any guesses? Nope. What's the brand we haven't heard from yet? Padron. Mm, Padron. Padron. May yet go. The, another big one, the Family Reserve, number 95 in natural, 60 ring gauge by four and three quarters. That's the, so new, that's the new one. That's the, that's new, the line. new one. Yeah. That's the new one. People are raving about that line of cigar. Yeah. Raving. I, I had just, it. I had that. You liked it? Was yeah. It? it was very good. You like that? I mean, I don't like the size, but it's it was a good <laughs> stick. 
you know, I'd be interested in trying it because it's Padron, but I just, Same. I don't know if I'm going to, I just don't know if I could do a 60. They There's just a, so many other interesting things that so they So they have out. other ring gauges in that new line. That well, that's have. not a new line. It's just Family Reserve. 90th? 95th? It's, it's, it's only, number 95. It's only is, in that size. That size oh, is the I only see, one. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very, it's it's not a hot smoke. It's a very cool smoke. You know, mm. the bigger the ring gauge, the cooler the smoke. Because there's more air in there, I guess, right? Yeah. But it's it just very uncomfortable mm. to smoke that cigar. That mm-hmm. Anything over a 54 is... It's uh, a jawbreaker. It's an overkill. Did you, uh, did you smoke the Maduro? Or the natural? Maduro. Yeah, this one, yeah. they put number one as the natural. What a strange list. Yeah. So that's that's it. Um, we've done both of the uh, the big lists that people are referencing. Not a lot of winners, I would say, for us or me on the, either of those lists. The two Davidoffs, I think we should, well, we, the well, Dominicana's in our line, but that Perfecto, we should Yeah, we try. could try the Perfecto. Uh, I would be curious that's to cool. try that Henrik Kellner uh collab yeah yes. the principle yes yeah, the principle. yeah we'll try that and we'll try the other one in uh in uh, the that Lonsdale. was a lancero right uh yes lancero yeah it was a 38 or 39 and we'll also try the uh i'll pick those up the uh, placencia yes in the lonsdale yes yeah cool so you guys mentioned the super bowl uh it was not fun it was not fun. a good time i know that it was a lot of fun come on <laughs> kidding we it's one of the best super bowls great... in a long time it, I mean, it really was close was. it was a close game yeah I mean, they went from the flying eagles to the crying eagles, you know, <laughs> just like that. The 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 yeah, pleasure that the right. Giants fans have gotten out of the Eagles losing is nauseating to me. <laughs> the text, all, right. all right, it's nauseating. I draw no no pleasure from this. Let's uh, let's thank, be very. Thank you, I mean, he's not a Giants fan. He's not, I'm not. division. That's right. But let's just be clear. I could have cared less about that outcome in the sense that even if the Eagles won, that's only their second Super Bowl. The Giants have four. You guys got a ways to go to come catch up to the Giants. I'm deadly serious. So, like, for this me, punishment. it's They've not only a big won deal. one Super Bowl. That's Ever. Right. That's yeah. my Ever. point. Yeah. That's why, honestly, when the Eagles played Brady and beat him, I was rooting for the Eagles just because. I can live with, oh, fine, let them get one Super I would hope the Eagles can get one. And um, But I was tired of seeing Brady win, so I was actually very happy to see Philly win. And Nick Foles was the quarterback in that victory. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there's none of, for me, it's not like, oh, I need to see the Eagles lose all the time. I feel that way about the Cowboys. That That's where, like, we most all of feel that way. That. We all feel that way. Um, the reason you were getting shit is you will conveniently forget, but I will remind you of the times throughout this entire season that you have rubbed in our face how well the Eagles were playing. Yep. You're sitting in the lounge with us watching a Giants game go to overtime saying, oh, is the game still going? My game's over. We won. How's your game going? <laughs> I mean, you can't dish it out and then not take it. No, That's I can take I'll it. I could take it. However, I can definitely take it. I just, it's just the the volume, not so much from you guys, just the volume from all the Giants fans, the pleasure that they got, it's almost like their Super Bowl, the who, first Super who Bowl. Who is they? Who are you communicating? My other friends. All these other, I have a lot of to you. Senator. I have a lot of Giants fans. <laughs> friends, a lot of a lot of friends of mine are Giants fans. Well, yeah, no one's gonna. Okay, there's a there's a little bit of, you know, rationale behind. I this. get the rationale. It's just irritating. It's the just, rationale it just, is is that the fan base is maybe since the Oakland Raiders of the. 70s and 80s the most despicable fan base <laughs> and unlikable fan base they are unlikable. in the Ever. history of of sports and football and in professional in the, sports ever yeah, yeah these these are these are people who have who have uh assaulted they lit a child on fire <laughs> for one they lit a child small child they lit a small child on fire is that true yes. i'd like to see the source on that yeah yeah they lit they've they've beaten uh people put them and in animals. the hospital i think they may have even have killed people there's been murders <laughs> did they deserve it um <laughs> right i mean so there's arson involved um assault Murder. Uh, Look, all the of the vandalism. Thing, the only thing I you, mean, you don't see Giants fans going out and vandalizing and lighting cars on fire and like destroying their own city. It, this is lunacy. Because Rutherford, is why there's nothing going on in Rutherford. That's why, that's that's I, I have news for you. The ticker God. tape parade when the Giants win their Super Bowls, <laughs> again, four of them, happens in New York City. And <laughs> again, four. And Thank there's you. no looting, rioting, any of that. Everybody's happy. Everybody's they're celebrating. And they call it the land of the brotherly love. 
And there's oh, no love in that city. city. They literally thought. destroy. So the only thing you should be happy about is Philly still stands yeah. as a city because they lost that game. Dude, this has <laughs> nothing to do with actually like the the franchise itself or like i mean listen did i take pleasure in watching lawrence taylor destroy Dwar- jaworski like and beat the shit out of him on a daily basis no i loved it are you <laughs> kidding that was fantastic but 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 like i mean we beat the shit out of you guys for years and and the fan base is not, just not lately though. Not no, lately, no, not lately. I'm talking about the buddy, worst buddy, get the buddy Ryan, Ryan buddy Ryan years. Oh yeah. Um. Uh. But but it's a despicable group of human beings. <laughs> oh boy. That are that 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 root for this dude. They're being, look at the behavior. It's newsworthy. I mean, this isn't like debatable. It's like they grease the poles. Listen, a little adrenaline never hurt anybody. Oh. <laughs> I Jesus guess. <laughs> Say that to the police horses that they kick the shit out All right, of. Right, you tailgates. know I'm a big animal guy. Yeah, I'm not into I that. sent you the articles. <laughs> they kick the shit out of animals, people, children. They light things on fire. They also it's, eat horse manure. It, it's disgusting. <laughs> Which is, also the path. So that's why. That's the, the reason. The, the why. other thing. The other thing. Why I think anyone that was just an observer, uh, it was so notable to watch the Eagles lose that game is I don't think anybody debates and Vegas agrees with what I'm saying here on paper. The Eagles have had this entire year, the best team on paper in football period. No I'll never Absolutely. take that away from them. They've built an outstanding team. They were favored by Vegas to win that game. So to see them lose in the underdog win, I think in any mm-hmm. Super Bowl, the same reason everyone was a Giants fan the two times they beat Brady, yep. there's always that underdog story. And I think that was. And was the call Jesus. bullshit? No. No. Uh, when you was, see was, the other was, views, it's a, it's legit. It was, it was legit. It was, it was legit. Oh, oh, no. I, I was never I was never angry at the Initially, whole Initially, I thought it was a BS call, yeah, but, but then you see the other views that of it. Did it not, was, he actually said it himself. Yeah, yeah, I know. I like, saw oh, that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. But was it a little chippy on the, the borderline of chippy? It yeah. was the first hold the call all game. Yeah. Like, Sorry. maybe. You can debate that back and forth. Is yeah. that something that I would be bitter about if I was a giant, you know, as a giant fan? Like, what? Could you was the ball catchable? Definitely not. Was it a little chippy? Maybe. Was it technically a hold? Definitely. If the second mm-hmm. half was more competitive, like, if the second half was more competitive and the Eagles showed up in the second half and that call actually determined the end of the game, fine. But it did. That it, wasn't the it case. Did. I mean, the punt return. It's just yeah, so, so many things. So many really, and it's by the way, and the and the Eagles, the Eagles go like their ability. To control the line of scrimmage, particularly on offense, and every fourth every down, fourth that's down, when they can go for it. Every and going fourth. for it every, they had possession of the football for so long they, they never should have lost the game. That's true. They ran. They should have blew they, them out. Honestly, they ran double the amount of plays in the entire game than the Chiefs did. Double the two the big amount. issues. Two big issues were special teams issues. They missed that field goal and that long punt return was like literally a knife. In the stomach for Philadelphia. Also, also the way the Eagles got to the Super Bowl, right? Who'd they beat? They beat the 49ers third swing quarterback. Yeah. To get there. Yeah. Yep. They beat the Giants where Danny uh, Daniel Jones was. You know, but don't elbow, discount elbow that. In. Remember, San Francisco won nine in a row with that kid. Nine. Nine. No, that not, kid not got with, hurt. Not with per, they played the nah, fourth yeah. string quarterback. They, they've had fourth to play string. four quarter. That's yeah. true. They That's literally right, right. had to play the fourth string this quarterback. This is true. Yeah. yeah. They went through quarterbacks. And then on top look, of and then on top of that, Philadelphia lost. What they lose this year? They lost the MLS Cup. <laughs> oh boy! They lost the World Series <laughs> and the Super Bowl. <laughs> They're certainly not going to win the basketball championship. Gizmo, is Gizmo right wants to move on. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, we just, we just it was miserable. It, <laughs> it was miserable. It was not. Let me just tell you, you guys haven't experienced this in quite some time. I mean, you the last two Super Bowls that the Giants were in, you won. It really sucks losing the Super Bowl, man. You know, you know it's what? funny you mention that actually because when you, you got... when you go back and look it up, the uh, the the thing why we don't really <laughs> understand this feeling very much. We've made five Super Bowls and we've won four okay. out of the five. All right. Well, you know what? You can all but, go screw you yourselves. Know, I, must say, I, must... I don't even know what it feels like to be in a Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You might never find that. I won't ever. <laughs> Maybe my son will see it. For the for the listener, Bam is uh, unfortunately a Jets fan. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I must say that the Eagles are the team to beat in the NFC. That's they true. Yeah. In, in all and, the football. Especially you know, with I mean, Brady. And Brady most up. of the team is going to be intact. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they, uh, they're going to lose some The O-line is a little bit older. Yeah. They might, you know, Kelsey's might... going to retire, I think. But their offensive line this year is elite. It's the best elite. O-line in the league. Yeah. 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 
That's why I can't feel bad for them. They had every resource you could ever want to win a Super Bowl, and if you don't do it, I mean, you and got Jalen no Jalen Hurts can't throw more than fifty yards. By the way, that last that, that hail last mary was. Oh was I mean, all his guys are like in the end zone, oh, and they could in a short. <laughs> okay, he, right, can we lost he can run. He can run. <laughs> all right, it's nauseating. We lost the Super Bowl. I'm glad you guys. I'm so happy for you, losers. <laughs> you fucking losers. Giants, losers. Your I'm so anger glad. during it was what made it all the more. <laughs> oh, I was teeing off. You were lashing out like we've never seen before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for that, guys. Yep. No, Giz- oh, by the no, way. Gizmo, thank you. By the way. Um, mm-hmm. That's for being second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, I wanted to say this because I've heard a lot of people talking about it. I thought that the broadcast team was excellent. Burkhart and Olsen. Olsen was great. I thought they called a really, really good game. Yeah. I, I thought it was isn't really Olsen good. getting replaced by Brady? Yes. I don't know That's if they're the going to do that. That's because, a rumor. Well, Brady's now coming on in fall of 24, so he's got another season on the sideline. Mm. And I think they're – here's my guess. My guess is Jimmy Johnson retires after one more year, and they put him in the Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson seat on the uh, the pregame show. That's what I got. And I also don't think he's going to be very good, Tom well, Brady. We'll I don't either. He doesn't no. have much personality for TV. No, I agreed. His podcast is – I think Jeter will be good. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. He's joining the Fox Baseball. That's uh, going to be cool. I, I find think that he'll interesting. Be really good. I find that interesting that he's willing to sit next to a Rod. The thing is, the timing's <laughs> not coincidental. So they they buried the hatchet with the the documentary. Right? That's the thing. Yeah. Jeter's wife got involved and wanted them to just finally let bygones be bygones, and now they are on speaking I, I think he'll be tremendous. He's, he's he's been dealing with the media and a, been a been a PR machine single handedly on his own for so long i think it'll be fantastic at it yeah i also love like jeter is just super honest and direct i mean he doesn't like pull punches at all so i feel like in that kind of role he's just going to say what he really wants to and feels he's a great communicator he always been. Mm, he's always yeah. he, he's measured but he's, he's direct he, he like picks his spots the dude's a, the dude's a ninja and he, plus with uh with uh, uh ortiz there too big poppy i think that's a cool dynamic yeah between him and A-Rod and, uh, and, and Poppy. Yep. Well, that's the that's a joke Jeter made. He said something like, you know, Poppy's always showing off those rings next to A-Rod. Someone's got to add a little balance <laughs> to that with more rings than A-Rod's got his one. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thank you, boys, for that. Thanks yep. for the, the kind reminder. Uh, we'll Anytime. See, we'll see Hopefully we can do it again next hey, listen, year. Listen, just save mm. all the fireworks and explosives in your trunk for next year. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of money on those things. <laughs> yeah, just keep your crowbar in there and everything else. Your baseball bats. Yeah. M80s and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, boys. Well, we're coming to the end here of the warped Maestro Del Tiempo 5205. What kind of, how's it treat me in the last third? Very nicely. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant cigar. Zero complaints. I'm absolutely buying a box. Yeah. Before I even pack up tonight, I'm buying a box. I am absolutely piggybacking on one of your orders. <laughs> <laughs> it's like his credit card doesn't work or something. <laughs> this guy. My Venmo works great. <laughs> so uh, you guys yeah, ready to do go, the... let it go, Rooster. Uh, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready to do the uh, formal liquor rating on the Athletic Brewery IPA Run Wild? Yeah. Very impressive drink. All right, Bam Bam, you're up. You guys may think I'm crazy, but because I can drink five of these and feel fantastic after it, I have to give it a nine mm. because of the flavor I'm getting. Now, that's a big score. You know, how do you compare this to the high scores that we gave that bottle of Remy, 1738? It, it, you can't compare it, but for what it is right now, this is a nine for me. Senator. Bam, I don't think you're crazy at all. I'm, I'm in the exact same spot. Delicious. I mean, I have long criticized non-alcoholic beer as being flavorless and it was a joke for like, years exactly a joke being nothing like the real thing and this was one of the first and 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 few that i've had that um i think has a permanent place in my fridge when um you know i think giz said this once about kind of the guinness ear of like in an afternoon where he's not looking for a buzz but he's just craving the taste of a beer this slots in so many times in that place mm-hmm. and every time i'm satisfied and I actually like that it's not super full and heavy, yes. that it doesn't, I don't feel shitty after having it alcohol aside. So for me, it's a strong nine. So I totally agree. I, I'll piggyback on that because where I'm thinking about this is like at lunch, have a chicken salad or something. I think this is perfect for that, especially when you want to get back to your work day. Like I am all in on this. Yep. Just well, think about the, this. You could, you could have this in your car while you're eating your salad. That's <laughs> exactly where I was going. That's it. That's brilliant. 
driving down the highway doing 70. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm also at a nine. I, I, when you said, I thought you were going to go 10 when you no. started kind of yeah. hedging it a little bit, but I'm also at a nine for sure. That's been my score since, uh, since yeah. I tasted it. I think it's excellent. Also, just a quick note. When, I, when my wives, when my wives, when my wife. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, let's dig into that, boys. <laughs> no. When she has her girlfriends over and, you know, a few of them like beer, but they'll have one. Mm -hmm. They can have a few of these and feel great. Yep. That's true. That's, it's pretty versatile that way. Yeah. yeah. Pooba. I, I, I really haven't had many. I mean, this is maybe my second or third in my life. Um, so I don't have much to compare it to. I mean, I'll give it a nine just because it tasted like beer. Peer pressure. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I just don't. I don't have much to compare it to, really. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, it's which, which you don't need. I mean, I feel like yeah. if you're saying it tastes like beer, that's what they're going for, yeah. and, and it tastes, it tastes like, like good beer. Yeah, it's it one of like, it's it one of the better like, ones out there. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah it tastes good. So I mean, as far as non-alcoholic beers go, not compared to regular beer, I mean, I would. It's the best one I've ever had. Yeah, mm. but I've only had a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Rooster. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm same. I'm. I'm at a nine. Awesome. Yeah. So the formal liquor rating, boys, is a flat nine point zero. Highly recommended. So let me ask you: We didn't talk about this. How much was? How many were in there? Twelve or six? So the 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 six pack is usually about twelve bucks. The twelve pack, you save a couple bucks. It goes for twenty. Uh huh. <laughs> I, so the funny thing i see i see the reaction I, the lizard math is the happening gears, the I gears the are reaction. turning right now the funny <laughs> thing is the first time i went and bought this when it was <laughs> look at his face <laughs> i'm not smiling i'm just trying to understand <laughs> well that's the thing is i had this the same expectation math, that you probably <laughs> did look when i went in the liquor store in january first time i bought this stuff i'm sitting there like oh it's non-alcoholic it's probably less than real beer and i'm sitting like how the fuck do they charge the exact same price but someone said to me, which obviously makes sense, the process is identical. So, yeah. so that's where they have oh, to. Yeah. Plus, it costs more to take the alcohol out. <laughs> oh, now you're really making it. <laughs> you're really that. making the gears turn now. <laughs> Look Was at the up. alcohol ever in? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they take it out. <laughs> Well, that was that's a very very good beer, and I think a nine point zero is a perfect score for it. I'm definitely awesome. going to be picking some of that Me up. Me too. It's yeah. definitely worth like getting into. So, you know, if, if you like non-alcoholic beers, there's a lot of non-alcoholic good beers out there. Well, I mean, this is um, what the fourth, third, or fourth we've done on the podcast. Yeah. So I mean, it, I, I think this is a great thing to keep doing because we have a lot of listeners out there, you know, in in Lizard Nation who've emailed saying that they really. Mm have appreciated the fact that we've done some non-alcoholic pairings because, A, not everybody drinks, and not everybody can drink when they have a cigar for whatever reason. So, um, you know, it's a good it's a good, uh, hmm. good avenue for folks to pair with because it's really working with this great cigar. Oh, it is. I mean... It is. This is a... Uh, this has been an excellent cigar tonight. I can't wait to see where this rates. Who... Which listener recommend? This, this came from Nick. Nick. Lizard Nick, Nick. You're the man. Yeah. Great recommend. Excellent recommend. This lounge, Nick? Yeah. Really? Yep. Our home lounge. Cool. Home lounge, Nick. Lizard Nick. Are wow. you serious? Yeah. Wow. Nicky boy came through. Yeah. He's Killed redeemed it. himself. Henry's <laughs> Henry's his, in the closet. His his <laughs> friend recommended Nikki. the Las Calaveras. <laughs> yeah. So Henry, we're going to put in the closet. Nick comes forward. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys ready to do the uh, formal lizard rating on the warped Maestro yeah. Del Tiempo? All right. Rooster, you're up. Um, this is going to be a hard I mean, one. Yeah, it's tough because he, you know we. I gave the number, the my father number four a nine. Yeah, and this to we me, know. this is. <laughs> yeah, we, uh oh, the gears are restarting again. By the way, over there. <laughs> so this cigar, I think, has more flavor than the my father number four. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a ten. Wow! Wow! wow. For the price, yeah. For the yeah, price, value. For we got a factor in value. The experience. Yeah. Yeah. Puba. Loved it. I thought it was a great cigar. Um, can you, can we comment? Puba was the first to finish this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was really, really good. I really, really liked it. It's not a nine, but it's a solid eight. If I could decimal it up, I would. It's still a great score. But it's yeah. a really, yeah. I mean, I really liked it. Yeah. I, I, it, it, like, um, I have nothing negative to say about it, actually. I mean, yeah. I really just, I really, really enjoyed it. It's a solid eight for me. Okay. Really Senator. liked it. 
For me, it's a solid nine. Mm -hmm. I will buy a box of this. I would smoke this again. I I love almost everything about this cigar. The only reason that it didn't crack 10 for me is um, some of the creamier, sweeter notes that I was getting in the first half and even some of the second half don't exist in the final third. The final third is still enjoyable. I think it picks up in strength, more leather, earthy notes. Um, but I loved some of those creamy, sweeter notes that if that could have stayed at, toward the very end, this would be a 10, and I'd smoke this all the time. But I'm still going to smoke this regularly. Yeah. It's a solid I, nine. I kinda, mm. I'm kind of enjoying the, the, the last third of the cigar because I like those spicy... Pepper yeah. notes that I'm getting yeah. from this. Yeah. yeah, that came through in the end, yeah. right? Yeah. It, was, it definitely it's changed. Really changed. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. So I'm also at a nine for sure. Um, you know, my father, I think I gave that a nine as well. If we were if we were to have decimals to, to Rooster's point, like a my father to me is like a ninety one. This performed like a ninety three or a ninety four for 95, me. Ninety five, I would say. Maybe. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm really really happy with this, mm -hmm. and I think value plays into where where I'm going to slot this. And I just, as you know, I just love the feel of a Lonsdale in the hand. You know, this is r really, really satisfying. And I think it could fit almost anywhere. This could fit after dinner. This could fit after lunch. This could fit in the morning with a cup of coffee. Like, it really can fit anywhere in the rotation for yeah. me. I, I'm very, very happy with this card. I'm definitely buying a box. It's a nine for me all day long. Yep, yep, yep. I can't see this going below a nine, so I'm at a nine. Yeah, and I got a hint of pepper at the end. Not a lot for me. It, it takes a lot for me to feel a, a, that strong a strong cigar. This was a kind of a heavy creaminess that continued all the way through to the half inch that I'm holding here. So, for me, yeah, do, do I, I you... liked I liked the, the 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 first half of the cigar in the middle. The last third wasn't quite as enjoyable for me. Maybe that was, that's what took it down. I mean, if I had to rate it, I probably would have given it like an you know, to me, it's like an 80, maybe an 87 point cigar for me. I like it. I mean, like I would buy a box of these. I would smoke them. I think that the construction, the burn, everything was really, really good. Yeah. Um, Really nice, nice smoke. Yeah. Really nice. I'm very, very happy with this. Yeah. Well, boys, an excellent pairing tonight. Both are a non-alcoholic Beer from Athletic and the Warped Maestro Del Tiempo 5205 in Lonsdale. Both got a 9.0 tonight, which awesome. is an excellent pairing night. It's, it was the experience was delicious all around. Yeah. And I think that this beer actually really stood up to properly to the flavor profile of the cigar and the strength profile. I thought it was really, really uh, a nice pairing, especially for a Monday night. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know what? A big thank you to Nick to, for recommending this. Great recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah, good cigar. And now I know why he recommended this and Henry recommended the last Calaveras. <laughs> Henry's an uh -oh. Eagles fan and oh. Nick is a Giants fan. Oh, boy. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Mr. is correct. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. Great cigar. And I've been, and for the listener, <laughs> I, I, I may have given it an eight, but I, I, I was the first one to finish it. I, I loved it. I yeah. mean, I really did. Um, it just didn't hit every note for me down at the end. That's all. I mean, but it's not a knock. And this plays into, again, this plays into, we talked about it as we started, but we should kind of, you know, round it out. This plays into us, again, finding another budget New World stick in a size we love that performed way better than it should have at eight or ten bucks a cigar. And any cigar that you smoke on the pod and you end up buying a whole box of that cigar... It's worthy. It says a lot. You know, it's, it, it says a lot. lot. It says yeah. a lot. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a high recommend. Absolutely. All right, boys. A 9.0 for both of them tonight. Great night. Great conversation. And we'll see you all next week. Cry, Eagles, cry. <laughs> Keep smoking. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for joining us. You can find our merch store and ratings archive at our brand new website, loungelizardspod.com. That's Lounge Lizards, P O D. Com. Don't forget to leave us a rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. If you have any comments, questions, if you want to reach out, say hello, tell us what you're smoking, email us, hello at loungelizardspod.com. You can also find us on Instagram, at loungelizardspod. We really appreciate your time, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week.